Hey, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're working on a hybrid. Now we're just doing a basic oil change on this hybrid. This is a 22 Accord sitting behind me here, but I wanted to answer the question of is it safe or can you change oil on a hybrid? Whether you're a DIY person who owns a hybrid that wants to change oil in your garage at home, or even if you're a shop and you want to get into changing oil and maintaining hybrids, can you do it? Is it safe to do? Are there things that you need to know? Well, the short answer is yes and yes. Uh, yes, it's safe to do as long as you're cautious. And yes, there's other things that you're going to have to check. There's going to be some more things that you need to be cautious about, some things that you need to be careful of. But working on a hybrid really isn't much different than working on a regular car. In fact, I've heard a recent statistic that said 90% of hybrid vehicle repair don't even involve the high voltage system. And now when I'm talking high voltage, we're talking over 200 volts of DC electricity flowing through this car. So it can be dangerous if you go about it the wrong way. But fortunately on most hybrids, um, I believe every hybrid these days, the cables are very well labeled and the systems are laid out in a way to make sure that you don't accidentally um, do something that you shouldn't. It's very, uh, it's, they've, they've taken safety into account to make sure nobody gets hurt when working on these things. So let's take a look at what we have to check under the hood of this hybrid. Okay, so the first thing you obviously see is this orange cable right here. Now this orange cable is actually running down to um, the electric water pump and the uh, AC compressor. Actually, I think that's just AC compressor. But you can see here that I can touch it and I'm not getting electrocuted, right? It, this is orange conduit with the orange high voltage cable inside. So anytime you see orange, it is going to be your high voltage cable. So, it, I mean, really it means don't touch, don't, don't cut it, right? Don't get out the old side cutters and, and cut that to get it out of the way. You can also see back here, the connector has a special locking tab, a, a unique locking tab style, so that way you don't accidentally go disconnecting that. So if you're seeing orange under the hood, that's normal, and it just means to stay away, that's high voltage. And except for they use orange on the, uh, on the dipstick for some reason, don't know. But uh, we'll start by, uh, just like every oil change, try to loosen the oil cap. Get that out of the way. This engine's going to take 0W20 in here. And then we'll just do our normal inspections. Now this is a pretty low mileage uh, being a, a 2022. Um, but you'll want to inspect certain things. There's other things on here aside from just like the normal coolant reservoir that you're going to have flowing through the radiator. There's also an inverter coolant reservoir over here. So this is for the hybrid systems. You want to make sure that you have coolant in this reservoir as well. And then you have your brake fluid back here and, and every hybrid will arrange this a little bit differently. The main thing that you want to be checking though is check the two coolant reservoirs and make sure they're both full because the cooling systems themselves, these two, are independent of each other on this vehicle. So the hybrid part of this engine or this vehicle is actually over here underneath this black box. It's really part of the transmission assembly in here. So we have our traditional gasoline engine here and a hybrid motor and everything over here all covered up. You can see where the, the orange cable is running into, into this assembly right here. Um, again, it's nothing that we have to mess with today to simply change oil or do uh, any other normal maintenance on this car. So let's get this thing up in the air and take a look. All right, so lifting up a hybrid vehicle, you do want to be cautious because like, uh, well, like many new vehicles today, there's not really a place to put a jack under the front of the car here. As you can see in the picture, we have shields everywhere under, under the side, front side of this thing. So what you're going to want to do on these and, and many new cars really is lift on the manufacturer lift points that they put on the sides of the cars. They have a little steel piece with an arrow on it that shows you where you should lift it. So if you're doing this at home, you could still use ramps. You could put the front end up on ramps. Uh, you don't get the tires to hang then, but you could do ramps. Or um, on this one, if you're using a jack and jack stands, you would want to lift each side of the vehicle independently. Definitely check the owner's manual for where you need to be lifting the vehicle and make sure you're doing it safely using jack stands and that kind of thing. So let's, uh, let's get the oil draining on here and then we'll kind of go over the rest of the underside of this car. Also, if you're enjoying it so far, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications and follow us on 
social media and those kinds of things as well. Now being a Honda, there is a drain plug gasket on here, so we'll be swapping that out as well to prevent any oil leaks. 17 millimeter on this drain plug here. And uh, I don't know what you guys are doing for oil changes, but uh, I'm still running 5,000 miles on this oil in a hybrid. Um, the maintenance minder on this car that told me that it needed an oil change came on at the 10,000 mile mark for the first one. Uh, and this thing had already had two oil changes at that point. So uh, oil is the cheapest, uh, cheapest thing you can do to prevent uh, replacing an engine, right? Um, way cheaper to do than, than an engine. So let's take a quick look underneath here. I want to show you guys that there's so many different things that you can do. So much room for activities underneath here. Uh, that don't involve the hybrid electric system. So let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to look for under here is where's the orange cable? Because somewhere we have to get from the engine compartment area all the way to the back of the vehicle for the battery. And now we'll find that orange cable running in a steel conduit or maybe plastic, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's plastic on here, I think. But it's running in a conduit in the innermost middle of the vehicle. And the reason they do that, this is intentional. If you run it towards the outside more, it's more likely to run into an issue in an accident. You don't want to be having an issue with the high voltage system in an accident. So they run it towards the middle of the vehicle intentionally, and it'll run back here, and then it'll end up going up through the body to the battery compartment, which is going to sit up above our gas tank here um, in the trunk or back seat area of the car in here. The orange cable, probably can't see it, but it's, it's within this exhaust shield or between the body and this exhaust shield right in here. So again, not something we really need to be concerned about as we get to the back of the vehicle here. Let me grab a flashlight. As we get to the back of the vehicle here, you can see there's no special orange cables or anything back here. As we look at the, you know, the wheel bearing area and the suspension components and stuff, there's nothing special about this. It's really no different than any other 22 Honda a cord, right? We have the electric uh, brake assembly for the caliper, you know, the electric parking brake, nothing crazy there. It's not running high voltage or anything like that. So servicing the rear suspension on a car like this is no different than servicing any, um, any other Honda Accord or, or any other car for that matter. Um, one thing that is different is the exhaust on a hybrid. As we follow the exhaust forward, you'll see this contraption right here. It's a little bit warm. Uh, but these are coolant hoses running to the exhaust and I believe the reason that they do that is to keep the coolant or, or warm the coolant up faster using hot exhaust gas to be able to heat the cabin of the vehicle. The intention is to run the engine as short or, or as little as possible to keep the, uh, the cooling system warm to keep the cabin warm on the car. Now it looks like our oil is just about drained out here. I think we can, can get the filter loose and let that drip. And of course, the last guy who did it, way tighten, over tighten the filter. And yes, that last guy who did it was me. <laughs> Let that drain a little bit. As we look at the as we look at the front suspension here, it's pretty much the same. Uh, you know, you just have your traditional brake calipers, ball joint, tie rod ends, axle shafts, sway bar links, you know, nothing high voltage to worry about up here. As we look underneath here, everything that would be related to that hybrid transmission assembly in here is all covered with metal shields and stuff. So we're not going to bother taking that all apart today. It's nothing we really need to worry about. Not too much to changing oil on here. In fact, this car doesn't even need a shield removed to be able to change oil, which is, it's, it's really nice. And having a standard uh, oil filter on here is nice as well, instead of those cartridge style. Get the old oil filter off. Always make sure, with, it, with any oil change, not hybrid specific, but always make sure that O-ring's coming off with it. And uh, where did I put the oil filter? Every, uh, every half hour job is, you know, 25 minutes of looking where the parts are and five minutes of actual work, right? All right, so we got our new oil filter. We're going to lube up the O-ring on there. Uh, this would be a good opportunity to wear gloves as well. Um, now, 
I see a lot of people who are still um, filling oil filters before they're going on the car. If you want to do that, go for it. Um, I actually looked in the owner's manual in here to see what Honda actually recommends in the owner's manual for changing the oil. It does not mention at all about filling the filter. Now, we, uh, we also don't fill the filter. Actually, I'm going to wipe that sealing spot off a little bit. We don't fill the filter, I don't think, on, on really any cars anymore these days. Our oil filters are pretty small. Um, and oil pressure is built up really, really quickly in the engine. So it's not something we really do. But if you, uh, if you like to fill the oil filter first, you know, go for it. But we will not be on this one. All right, we'll get that filter nice and tight. As much as I love all these shields and how it protects everything under the car, they can be really, really sharp. And this one that sits right next to the oil filter has, uh, has cut my hand a few times. Um, I don't know, probably too much money to, you know, smooth off those edges. A little sandpaper on there will probably help that out. But uh, let's get the O-ring on the, uh, or the gasket of the drain plug changed out here. Now you'll want to, uh, you'll want to change these out. These are crush washers. So when the and the drain plug is tightened down, this, this washer crushes. So every time you want to get a new one if you're, if, you're, uh, if you're changing oil. So we'll put our new one on here. I really like how clean this oil is, even with 5,000 miles on it. Much different than, uh, than turbocharged vehicles or diesel vehicles for that matter. Those, those come out really, really dirty. This stuff looks really good at 5,000 miles. All right, that's good. Everything here looks good. All right, so now we're just going to get the, uh, the oil filled back up. Nothing too crazy here. It's uh, holding four quarts of oil. I run synthetic in here. That's just uh, you know what I choose to do. You're welcome to run whatever the manual says. Uh, so four quarts of zero W twenty are going into this thing. And you know, like I said earlier, there's nothing too crazy about changing oil on a uh, on a hybrid. You know, it's not uh, nothing really to worry about as long as you follow the the precautions and the the owner's manual will definitely, or, or service information if you're a shop, will definitely, uh, you know, share that information with you. You know, there's a lot of warnings and those types of things. So, you know, follow the rules and, and you'll be all right. There's nothing, uh, nothing to really be afraid of here. Just be cautious. But you should be, really should be cautious working on, on any car. Uh, there's plenty of things that could, uh, could go wrong if you're not being cautious. All right, now we've got, uh, we've got four quarts of oil in there, so we'll be able to fire this thing up and check our oil level. Now, I, I forgot to mention two things early in the video here that I really, really need to bring up and should have, brought, uh, should have been brought up earlier. One, hybrid engines don't run all the time. Now, traditionally in the past, hybrid engines have been known to have sticking ring issues and, and other weird issues that could cause oil burning or oil consumption. So it's always a good idea, as with any car, to check the oil level before you actually change it. You want to see if the oil level is low to see if that car is burning oil. Now, I did check it on here beforehand and the oil level's right where it, where it should be and there's you know, only 13,000 miles on this car, so um, not too concerned about it at this point, but especially on higher mileage hybrids, you want to be checking the oil level before you drain it to make sure you're not consuming or using any oil on that engine. The other thing is, remember, a hybrid vehicle will not always run the engine but it could be in ready mode. So you always, always need to make sure that the ignition is off, that the key is off, that the, the instrument cluster is dark. You wanna make sure the ready light is not lit. On this model with the push button start, if the, if the ignition is on around that start stop switch, it's red. If the ignition is off, the, the color is either white or uh, no light at all. You need to make sure that's off. If you bring the vehicle in, pop the hood, 
and it's in EV mode at that point, it's possible if you don't shut the key off that the engine could start with no oil in it. Okay, the engine will start with the hood open, not like a remote start vehicle where uh, you can't remote start a vehicle with a hood switch. Obviously, we need to be able to run the engine with the hood open uh, for diagnostic purposes and those types of things. So it is possible that this thing could fire up if the car were readied up in EV mode. It may need to replenish that battery. So always be careful and make sure that the ignition is off. Make sure the cluster is dark before you go draining the oil on the car. All right. So we got our four quarts of oil in here. We'll get our funnel out of the way. And we'll fire this thing up quick and just double check our uh, double check our oil level. Now it's possible when I ready this car up right now that it might not actually start. See now, right now, the car is ready to drive. It has the ready light on in the dash and it's currently in EV mode. To get the engine to fire off, I'm just gonna go ahead and step on the gas. Nothing happens. Some hybrids, if you hold down the gas pedal, it'll start the engine. So if the car is in EV mode on here and, and you know pushing the gas pedal's not doing anything because it's in park, one way that you can always get it to, to uh, actually turn the engine on is to turn the heat on because the, the, the cabin in here is heated by warm coolant. You can go ahead and turn up your heat all the way and that'll get the engine to, to go ahead and fire up so you can, you know, you can check it accurately. So we'll shut it off and go check our oil level. All right, so now we can, uh, now that the engine ran, we can check our oil level. You can always wipe it off first and then check. And we are right between the two dots, right between the uh, where we need to be. We want it right in the middle. So we're, uh, we're good to go. Our, our oil change is, is done on our hybrid vehicle and nobody got hurt, right? There's, there's nothing too crazy about working on a hybrid. Like I said earlier, you know that, what, 90% of repairs done on hybrids don't even involve the high voltage orange cable system. Now, don't get me wrong, there's complexity as to working on the high voltage system and there's training and very many different ways to be cautious about going about that. But to do the simple maintenance on things, you don't have to shy away from it. If you're a, a DIYer type of person, a weekend warrior who likes to change your own oil, just because you own a hybrid doesn't mean you can't do that anymore, right? So don't shy away from that. And if you're a shop and you've been turning hybrid vehicles away for whatever reason, simple oil changes, brakes, suspension, tires, all of those things can be very easily done without even touching the hybrid system, without even pulling the safety plug out or any of those things. Now, again, if you get into the high voltage system, it's a whole nother story, but you know, that's only what 10% of repairs on a hybrid. So things are a little bit different, but uh, working on them is, is not too difficult at all. So I really hope you guys appreciate this video and enjoyed changing oil on a hybrid as much fun as, as that is. I'd love to, uh, you know, continue the conversation down in the comments below. When are you guys changing oil on cars traditionally or hybrids? You know, we're doing a 5,000 mile interval on this, on this hybrid behind me. What do you do on, on your hybrid or, or your regular uh, internal combustion engine? Uh, what are you doing for oil change intervals? Let's uh, continue that conversation down below. Otherwise, make sure to check us out on social on, you know, the Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, all those fun places as well. We're putting stuff out there as well. I uh, really appreciate you guys watching. Smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we have new videos coming out. Otherwise, uh, hope to talk to you guys soon. We'll see you in the next video. Really appreciate you watching. And as always, happy wrenching, everyone. Thank you.